oh, early. I think I'm going to have to restart it. They're getting, um, they're working on education. Uh, and it's a nice compliment because Yasmin's doing offline education um, with real kids on the ground in a real location and wanting to scale in a, you know, physical way. Um, and SAFE is working on online education. And actually, when we selected um, talking about how we want to tailor as rise and how we want to think forward about what it means for development in Egypt, I actually asked both of them independently because I knew that they knew one another um, and I knew that they knew each other's models. I said, are you interested in working together and learning from one another um, in this process as you scale? And they both replied in the affirmative. And I thought, what an, what an interesting way to, to have them both together in the fellowship program and able to scale their ventures and learn from each other and potentially pilot aspects of their program together into a blended learning model. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you Saif Abu Zaid, who will tell you more about Tahrir Academy. All right, so, um, حركتك? Emotions, okay? Okay, so um, a nine-year-old girl uh, was sitting in a classroom in a public school in Cairo with her uh, general sciences teacher. And the teacher was teaching them on astronomy. And he was explaining how Pluto, you know Pluto? How Pluto is actually a planet. This little girl, talked to the teacher after the class, and she told him, Pluto is not a planet anymore. <laughs> You're wrong, and the curriculum is wrong. And the teacher, luckily enough, for those of you who have a background about the uh, education system in Egypt and how the uh, not so uh, cool classroom environments are, uh, luckily enough, the teacher was actually uh, welcoming to her remarks, and he asked her to show him a reference. That reference was one of Tahrir Academy videos on astronomy with one of our volunteers explaining why Pluto is not a planet anymore. Um, the story is a lot longer. We discovered, uh, we knew about the girl from YouTube actually because the teacher invited the girl to make a presentation in front of the whole school during the Tabur Sabah or whatnot. And she made a presentation about why Pluto is not a planet. And then we were lucky to invite her over. This is Tahrir Academy. This is the most tangible impact of Tahrir Academy that we want to see. We want to see people who have critical minds. They have the ability to think and uh, uh, choose and decide on their own. They don't take anything for granted. They challenge every idea that is said to them. They challenge every concept that is said to them. And most importantly, they have curiosity for learning. Okay. So... Let me give you a little bit of statistics for those who love them. I don't, but I have to. Um, Egypt has been scoring really badly, unfortunately, in the, uh, all the, probably the rankings of education worldwide, whether it's the World Competitiveness Report, uh, anything on the Human Development Index, uh, even the Mo Ibrahim Index, which was on the African level, we've been scoring really badly. And of course, this is reflected in so many things. You can see the quality of the classrooms, um, uh, for example, you have, we have 19 million students now in Egypt, approaching 20 million, uh, but some of the schools have an average of 120 students per class. This is a true story, and it's happening in Giza, governorate. Uh, in the same time, we have around more than uh, 5,000 schools without teachers on an annual basis, without teachers in the deserted governorates. Uh, that's happening, although the number of teachers uh, in Egypt, the contracted teachers by the Ministry of Education is more than 1.8 million teachers. If you do the math, the ratio is not bad. It's actually better than the international average. However, these problems are happening. Uh, there are a lot of issues with education. I'm kind of stating the obvious. I do not need to dwell on the issues of education in Egypt. But let me fast forward to what Tahrir Academy is bringing on the table. Tahrir Academy, as I said, we want to build a generation of critical thinkers, knowledge seekers, and future leaders. And we, we are focusing on one role, which is basically creating engaging learning experiences that might stimulate 
uh, our learners through the power of the community and the internet. And how we do it is, sorry, I'm going to fast forward. Okay. How we do it is that we have a platform. The platform produces educational videos. We have more than 600 of them now. Uh, all the videos are in nine subjects, and they all have one thing in common, which is providing mind-stimulating learning experiences. So raise your hand if you ever thought of that. Who of you ever thought whether, why the sky is blue? Okay, that's very good. Why this, the, because this is what we focus on. We encourage our learners to think and answer and try to answer these kinds of questions. So why is the sky blue? Why is the snow white? Why is the water colorless? One of them actually, we invited them, we do campaigns on these kinds of questions. One of them actually asked us, why, how do you want to prove, how can you prove that tomorrow is Friday? It was really strange because it was a really deep question because no one really had an answer. Why is tomorrow Friday? What, how can we prove that tomorrow is Friday? So th this is the approach. We have a very inquisitive approach. I would have loved to show you the videos. You have the uh, platform at tahriyaacademy.org. Now, two years and a half uh, down the line, we were in, uh, established in 2011. We have more than 83,000 subscribed learners. That's the highest in the region. Uh, we also... Uh, we, we are always in the top 20 to 30 YouTube, cha YouTube channels in Egypt. We're only beaten by uh, the likes of uh, Tamar Hosni and Amri Dieb uh, and the new movie of Hafei uh, Wahbi and stuff like that. Uh, but we're always in the, in the top 20, which is a really good sign. Um, we're also YouTube partners. We just received last month uh, an award by the University of uh, Pennsylvania as the best MOOC. You don't know the term MOOC? Uh, massive online open courses. It's the, the platform, the learning platform. We were chosen as the best MOOC in the developing world. Uh, and we have more than 8 million minutes watched. So this kind of scalable uh, solution is what we're focusing on. Okay. I always do that. I put a lot of slides and never talk about them. Okay. So my, our curriculum is um, it's focused on critical thinking, again. Uh, it's highly democratic in terms of the fact that it's self-paced. Everything is on demand. You are not required to learn anything uh, against your will. Uh, so you always have the luxury of choosing what to learn, when to learn it, and how to learn it. Uh, we're building knowledge as well as shifting paradigms. So again, shifting the paradigms towards uh, uh, thinking in a critical way. So we don't we're not conclusive. We don't go and say, okay, this is why one plus one equals, uh, that one plus one equals two and that's it. We tell them the methodology and the different schools of thought and the different ways that people use to actually reach this conclusion. Just to enrich this kind of mentality that critical thinking is key and it's even more important than the ma'luma itself. So this kind of memorizing, and our slogan is actually khaliq fahim mash So we don't want people to memorize. It's focused on understanding. That's one of our questions, why do we sleep? Okay, so the main aspiration now is we have 83,000 learners. It's pretty impressive for a lot of people. Uh, however, the student population we're targeting, we're focused on the 13 to 18 year old uh, learners. It's 5 million, so that's, that's a lot of people. Our target is to reach 1 million learners by, the, uh, by 2016. And that of course poses a lot of challenges because uh, we have scalability in production outreach as an option. Um, Mona talked about how we want to, uh, uh, for example, partner with Educate Me. We want to partner with everyone, actually, because our model is not actually online education. Please never, never call us online education. We do not believe in online education. What we believe in is blended learning. So blending uh, technology and video-based learning uh, with the traditional uh, learning environment is what we believe in as the most effective teaching methodology. So this is what we're looking for. Uh, our model is based on crowdsourcing, so we want to crowdsource uh, the outreach. So we want everyone here in the room, whether you're a formal teacher, you're an NGO volunteer, or even a wahda sit bayt alha fil whatever it is, we want you to uh, use the content and, uh, and uh, educate everyone around you. Uh, one of our uh, 
Also, important things is scalability in production. So we want to, again, crowdsource the production. We have, as uh, Islam Hussain, one of our uh, volunteers is sitting in the audience. Islam uh, is, has done a course on uh, 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 viruses and uh, critical thinking. Hisham Hamouda has done a course on uh, child psychiatry. And we have a lot of volunteers in the diaspora or in Egypt doing the courses with us. Our next step is to actually, because we do a lot of high quality production, a lot of people say, okay, once they hear Tahrir Academy, they say, yeah, it's like Khan Academy. Please watch the videos. We're not like, like them. We're much better, okay? The, the production, I mean, Khan Academy is brilliant. They're, they're, they're really good. But we really focus on, we redesign the curricula. We, re, we revamp the way the content is uh, produced. So this is a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time. It's very costly. So we really want to uh, uh, depend on the expertise of anyone that's related to education or has the practice, the best practice of uh, teaching any subject to, to actually uh, scale. Okay. Operation and financial sustainability is always uh, is also an issue. Uh, we have an endowment that we're lucky with that, but we want to uh, uh, get more of that. Uh, operationally, uh, <laughs> Uh, we're trying so hard. I mean, we talked earlier uh, during the day about the uh, business models and how we're registered as a non-profit. So it's very tricky in Egypt. It's very uh, uh, challenging to actually be able to generate revenue. I mean, all of the management team and our board has a corporate background. I, I used to be a sales guy. I'd love to sell our product. I'd love to make money out of it. But the laws are crazy. The, the laws are really uh, an issue. So we need to, to work on that. Uh, also building a proof of concept. Because the blended learning model is a really new concept. Uh, I mean, it was the term itself was coined in 2006, I believe. So there's no lots of literature on the subject, and we really want to uh, work. I, I'm sure Rise will, will help us with that. Building a proof of concept uh, in terms of design and in terms of the monitoring and evaluation aspect. And of course, the political and legal challenges, I'm not going to dwell on that. Uh, but we have a peculiar situation because uh, some of our members were believers in the uh, so-called 25th of January revolution. So uh, that was a bit, th that's a bit of a challenge. So I'm, I'm currently spending half of my time trying to protect the uh, organization, uh, not actually doing the work that is required to do it. So that's another challenge, and I don't know how it will change. Dr. Farouk el by, by the way, uh, actually did a course with us as well. Okay, uh, we're educators, we love feedback, so please ask me questions, please, afterwards. afterwards. <laughs>